Corinthians chapter 6, I believe. And I'm going to read a verse of scripture and then bring the message. This is what traditionally they talk about on this Sunday, and I usually don't. But I felt like the Lord had me to today, so let's do this. Uh, uh, Galatians chapter number 6. The Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, wrote these words. Verse number 14. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 14. But God forbid that I should glory save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and I unto the world. You know what he said? He said, I can't glory in nothing but the cross. I want to preach this morning on the cross. The man that wrote that scripture by the Spirit of God, we know as the Apostle Paul. He was no doubt one of the best Christians, if not the greatest Christian in the New Testament church era. Many people would, would argue that he was the greatest preacher, one of the greatest, if not the greatest preacher in New Testament era was probably the Apostle Paul. And when he was coming down to the end of the road and the end of his life, he did not glory in anything except the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. He could have, he could have said, I'm going to glory in my knowledge. He had plenty of it. Very, very, very well educated. Man speak several different languages. Raised at the feet of Gamaliel. Was taught in all the manner of the Jews and Greeks. He knew the law backwards and forwards. He could have gloried in his, uh, his education. But he did not. He could have gloried in his ancestry. You look at the stock. Stock of Benjamin. right? Pure uh, Jewish blood. Right on back uh, to the days of Abraham. But he did not glory in his an ancestry. He could have gloried in his works. He could have said, man, I've been, I've been started that church in Galatia and Ephesus and Philippi and Corinth and all the church. I've started churches all. It's coming down to the end now. I sure am proud that I started all these churches like people do now. But he did not say that. He could have gloried in the many things that he had done. He did not even glory in the virgin birth. But he sure believed that and appreciated it and preached it. He did not glory in the miracles of the Lord Jesus Christ, although he believed that, and God worked miracles even by his hand. He did not glory even in the sermons that Jesus preached there. Uh, when he, uh, woman at the well, Nicodemus, John 3, John 4, John 5, the pool of Bethesda, and all the way to the Pharisees and Matthew 23 and all them scriptures. He didn't glory in that. He said, I boast in one thing, I glory only in the cross of Calvary. Now, there's a great piece of advice, people. That's a great piece of advice. If you can get like that, you can get the victory. If you get to where uh, you say, look, I can't glory in my intellect. I can't glory in my ability. I can't glory in all the things that I've accumulated. I can't glory in all the things that I've accomplished. I can't glory in that I've done this or beat that person in this sport or I've done that or I've, I've made more money or I've, I've had a better marriage or I've been more self. He said, I glory in one thing and that is the cross of the Lord Jesus Christ. It was uh, the death on the cross was the most shameful, humiliating death that a man could die. Yet Jesus made it glorious. There were thousands, maybe ten, hundreds of thousands of people crucified back in them days. It wasn't nothing to sing about. It wasn't nothing to glory about. It wasn't nothing to sing, man, wasn't that wonderful. Uh, if it, today, uh, the cross then, we would compare it to the, the electric chair now or the gas chamber. That's that'd be when they put somebody to death, capital punishment. Uh, ain't nothing to be proud. I mean, an old bloody cross who in the world would, I mean, think about that, y'all. I mean, you know, you never heard of anybody say, so I'll cherish the old uh, uh, electric cross, electric chain, electric chamber, electric cross, electric chair. No, no. You never hear nobody say that. So I'll, I'll glory in, in the gas chamber. I'll glory in the, in the electric chair. He said, I glory in the cross. It was the same thing back then. 
You know what made it special? It was who died on that cross and why he was dying. Ladies and gentlemen, he had become mighty and the power in the world and the light there kindled at Calvary has shed all over this world and is shining right here in Morgan and North Carolina and around the world today. I want to say a few things about the cross this morning. And the first thing I want to say about it is the cross shows the depth of human sin. The cross illustrates and shows us the depth of human sin. Now, we hear a lot about sin. We think we know something about sin. We hear about sin all the time and how bad it is. We see it in others. We see it in ourselves. But we'll never understand the depth of human sin until we go to the cross. Years ago, they said at Christmas time, one day in a small town, there's a crowd of people gathered out in front of a shoe store and there was people and the cops were there and people was laying there dead. Somebody was laying there dead and shot. And a man who was a shoe clerk who worked there had gotten an argument with the boss and they fired him and he went home and got his gun and came back and, and murdered them. And the people there, here's Christmas. And there they was laying there in the street and blood running down the sidewalk and some kid didn't have no mama or some uh, family didn't have no husband or daddy. And you say, oh, the shame of sin. Look what shame did to that family. And that's bad. That's bad. But you don't see the result of the, the depth of sin until you look at the cross. They said uh, uh, that many years ago during all those uh, uh, inquisitions and, and wars and the old, even when the Turks were persecuting and tor torching the Armenians back in those days they would, they would take all these uh, uh, captives out there and make them dig big trenches made them, give them shovels and the whole time they was digging them holes they knew what those holes was for, is for them and they wouldn't feed them. They was almost dead of starvation. And they'd dig a big old trench far as ever how far they needed it. And then just push them in there and push dirt on top of them and cover them up. Alive. What little bit of life they had left on them. That's happened to thousands of people. That's the depth of human sin. You think about all, all the murders that have been committed. And you think about uh, the, the drunkard's home. When you go out there, we see the results of sin every single Saturday on a bus ministry. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Uh, the shoe, kids come out with no shoes on. Kids come out with mama passed out in the living room floor. Kids come out, don't know where their daddy is. Uh, uh, somebody texted a bus worker that last week, almost 2 o'clock in the afternoon, said, have you seen my kids? They didn't even know they was on the bus. And we see the, kid, the life that kids have to live. We see the human trafficking. Uh, we hear about all the torture and the murder and the Hollywood sins and the wickedness. I'm on, and you think, Lord, how how bad sin is. But I'm going to tell you something this morning. But when you go to the cross, when you go to the cross of Calvary and you look and say, who is that? And they say, that's the Son of God. And you say, why has he died? And they say, because of sin. My sin. Your sin. Listen, it must have been pretty bad for God to give his son. For God to give his son. They ain't no man in here would give his son to let him beat him and torture him for somebody that hated him. Nobody, no man in here. I wouldn't, you wouldn't, none of us. We see, ladies and gentlemen, the depth of human sin. They said, now, many, many years ago, uh, uh, they said a, man, a rich man in Chicago had a daughter and she was dying. She had some kind of bad disease and it was before medicine was made available to everybody in, in every form. And uh, he heard about this doctor over in Sweden that maybe could save his daughter. And he spent a tremendous amount of money. It was twenty thousand dollars. Be like, uh, be like five million now. And he spent twenty thousand dollars. Had that doctor brought all the way from over in Sweden to America to try to save his daughter. And he paid that big price. And his daughter had the surgery and got well. And oh, how they thanked him. And word got around. Look at the price he paid uh, for his daughter to get well. Look at the price that man paid. All oh, could have spent that money doing other things. Buddy, he spent all that money to get that doctor to heaven. Now, that's just a little tiny take. That's a little tiny speck of the price that the Lord paid when he let his son come and die on the cross for our sins. 
Lord, in mercy, we ought to glory in the cross this morning. Ladies and gentlemen, if that, if that, don't, if that don't make you stop sinning, all the fussing and the cussing in the world we can do to you ain't going to stop you. I mean, we fuss at people and argue with them and, and, and everything. If the love of God don't make you want to stop sinning, there ain't no hope for you, buddy. I'm telling you, somebody that loved you that much, that cared about you, and the devil hates the cross. That's why Madonna wears a cross around her neck, because they hate it. They wear them upside down crosses, all the rock singers, and they crucify a frog on the cross and put it on a rock album. They'll, uh, they'll, they'll blaspheme it. They'll spit on it. They'll do it because the devil hates the cross. Why does the devil hate the cross like that? The devil don't hate pews or seats. Uh, the devil don't hate pulpits. The devil, he hates the cross because the cross stands between our soul and hell fire. Thank God we ought to glory in the cross. And I want to say this morning that I thank the Lord that he loved old daddy enough to go to the cross and pay the price for my sin. Glory to God, hallelujah. That's the best thing you've heard all day. Amen. Number two, let me say second this morning. The cross shows the highest love of heaven and earth. Not only the depth of sin, but the height of divine love. Not only how deep a man can go in sin, but how high God can go in love. God could have gave all the diamonds in the world. He, he owns them and a cattle on a thousand hills, but he didn't do it. God could have gave all the silver and gold, and he, but he didn't do it. He didn't give all those things. He gave his son. Now, they said years ago, uh, uh, back, back in the old horse and buggy days, there's a man and, and his fiance uh, was in the horse and buggy. He was doing something over here on the side of the street, and somebody spoofed the horse, and it took off flying down the street. And his, his little fiancé uh, wife-to-be was in the back seat screaming and uh, he was running down uh, toward, toward a, a high place or train track or something. And they said that young man ran down the street, went down there like that, and jumped out there and grabbed him reins of that horse and stopped him like that. And she got out and stopped it and the horse trampled him and he's laying there dying. And she held his head in her hand like that and he said, I loved you, didn't I? I loved you, didn't I? And she said, yeah. And that girl went the rest of her life saying, my fiancé loved me enough to give his life and let those horses stomp. Now, every, every woman in here say, oh, my goodness, I sure would love, wish somebody loved me like that. Somebody did. Somebody did. Somebody loved you. There's a man loved you enough to lay beat nails through his hands. They beat nails through his feet. Don't you ever let the devil tell you nobody loves you. God so loved you that he let his son be beat to death for mine and your sin. Think of the worst thing you've ever done in your life. Ever cuss word. Ever beer you've ever drank. Ever joint you've ever smoked. Every time you laid down with somebody you're not married to. Every time the sorriest, worst thing you could do. And God loved you enough to let his son drip his blood down that cross and pay for that sin. It's paid for. That's why we glory in the cross this morning. Amen. I told you about last week. A lady told me over in Asheville. What do you expect out of Asheville? Uh, they lady told me over in Asheville, I witnessed to her and give her a track. And she said, yeah, I saw a bumper sticker the other day that says, Jesus died for our sins, so let's get our money's worth. That ain't funny, y'all. That ain't a bit funny. There's nothing funny about that. There's something very perverted about how the devil makes a joke out of the cross of Calvary. It was no joke. The old song says, at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away. It was there by faith I received my sight and now I am happy all the day. Thank the Lord for the cross. Why is the cross loved? Why is the cross loved? It wasn't nothing but an old ugly piece of wood. I mean, it wasn't, and it wasn't no shiny, a smooth piece of wood like this, like you see people with the cross around. It was rough. It, it would, it would, the best I could describe it would be like a cross tie that's been on and been took up from the railroad, got big old places stuck out on it. They said that thing weighed 300 pounds. 
And that's why the men had to bear it up for the Lord after they beat him all night. And they carried that big old cross up that hill like that. And he got that cross, kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. And they finally got him up there. And those Roman soldiers took the Lord. They beat him all night. They covered his face with his spit. You want a man? There's your man. There's your man. There's your man, buddy. Oh, you say, well, I know somebody got beat. Yeah, but you know what? There's not many of it done it willingly. He done it willingly. He could have called 10,000 angels, put every one of them guys on the cross. He could have. Do you know why he stayed there? You know why he stayed on the cross? Listen, he put his hands out there. And, you know, in the Bible, all the way through the Bible, your wrist right here is part of your hand. And probably, I don't know this, probably the nail was back in here somewhere. Because it would have tore out if it had put it right there. So more than likely, the nails were right in here. That, that's your hand. And uh, they, they, they um, put him out there. And those guys held that hand down. They didn't even have to hold it down. He willingly would have laid that hand down. And they took a big spike. Rock group names themselves Nine Inch Nails because they hate him so much. And they put that spike right there, and the guy took a sledgehammer. You men know what a sledgehammer is? One of them about that long with a big old head on about like that. And they held that hand down, and he come down, and it went pow, like that probably went all the way through on the first lick, probably, and come out here, down in the wood, beat, beat. His back was already tore up like a piece of hamburger meat. His visage was marked where they'd spat on it in his face and, and put the crown of thorns on his head and blood running down his face like that right there. Oh, I know they don't like that out there in the world. They call that slaughterhouse religion. A lot of the major denominations are spending lots of money changing all the songbooks, taking out the cross, taking out the blood. They're just as much led of the devil as fool nos. Amen. I'm telling you this morning, ladies, now let's talk about him tonight. Uh, listen, you hear me this morning? Ladies and gentlemen, they put the nails right there. They put the nails through both feet and then they lifted that thing up like that. If you've ever put up a big old post or something, you got, you got your hole dug and you push it and you push it and you push it and you push it and then there comes a point where it just falls like that. You know, you guys ever put a big post in the ground and it falls like that and rips his flesh. And they say they would push up like this. They push up like that and put all the weight on their hands and it would hurt so bad. Then they'd let down like that, put all the weight on their hands and their feet up, push up like that, take the weight off their hands, put it on their feet, and it was just back and forth. A lot of times they suffocated, couldn't breathe all the way through here uh, because of the, of the pull on their lungs and stuff. And I'm telling you what, he could have called 10,000 angels, but the Lord that day on Calvary looked down through the sands of time and looked out 2,000 years into the future across the Atlantic Ocean into a little old place called Nebo, North Carolina and saw an 18-year-old boy laying on his face saying, Lord, have mercy on me and said, there's little Danny. I'll pay the price for his sin. And he turned up his cup and drunk it. Glory to God. Lord, have mercy. I appreciate his him dying for me, y'all. I appreciate him dying for me. And if it ever dawned on you what he done for you, you'd shout and say, glory to God, I glory in the cross. Thank God for the cross. Thank God for the cross. You say, well, preacher, I, I don't get me that excited. That's because you think you're good enough to go to heaven. We know we ain't. I know I ain't. But he ought to be in hell this morning, frying. But thank God for the cross. The cross, the cross, where I first saw the light. Why the old hymn writer said, when I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died, my richest gain I count but loss. Amen. And pour contempt on my pride. Thank God I have glory in the cross. Number three, the cross Listen to me. The cross is the place where every need of mankind is met. Are you going through a time of great sorrow? Take it to the cross. Are you having health problems? You're going to have to have surgery? You don't understand why you're having to go through what you're going through? Take it to the cross. Have you, has, you, have you, has, you, has your mate divorced you? Your, your relationship's all blowed up? You got your heart broke? You think, what am I going to do? I tell you what to do with it. You take that thing to the cross. There's a story in the Old Testament where these people come up to these waters 
And the Bible said they started to drink them waters and it was bitter. It's like, like drinking a persimmon or something like that. And they tell you it's bitter and they say, we can't, drink, we can't drink this. And you know what the Bible said God did? God could have just went bing, and fixed that water. God could have just let more water fall out of the sky. But the Bible said God showed Moses a tree, a piece of wood, picture of the cross. And he said, you take that piece of wood right there, Moses, and cast it in them waters. And Moses put that wood in them waters, and the waters turned sweet, just like what we got out of the water fountain back there. That means whatever bitter time, you're going, you got hard feelings towards somebody? You need to take that to the cross. Amen. You say, well, that's not my, they hurt my feelings. I know, I know, I know. I get it every week. You'll live. You know what you do? You say, they hurt his feelings too, buddy. He didn't give up. He didn't quit. He didn't go get drunk. He stayed there on the cross and paid the price for mine and your sin. The cross is where every need. Now, let me tell you something, people. <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ is the answer to every question you got. He's the solution to every problem you have. And any root of bitterness between you and another person, your husband, your wife, uh, your, your mother-in-law, your family, whatever. I, I heard years ago about this young couple. And they had um, fussed and fought all the time. They fussed and fought all the time. Finally, they said, I ain't living with you. I don't care. Go on. And they broke up and they got divorced. And what long after that till the little girl was killed in an accident. And there they all was at the funeral home. And they was all standing there, and I've seen them like that before. And they was all standing there, and they broke down and started bawling, and the husband and wife made up and got things right with each other because of the death of that child. Now, that's a sad way to have to do it. But me and you, we got a problem. You got a problem with me? You got a problem with somebody else? I'll tell you what to do. Both of you looked at the death of God's son on the cross and say, he died. Hey, hey, I ain't having to go through what he did, thank God. I'm not having to put up with what he did, thank God. Listen, I'm, listen we got it easy, y'all. I know, you know what's wrong with our churches today? Uh, we've had it easy for so long here in America. We've been blessed so long here in this country. We just think the, the American dream, you know, raise your family, go to church, go eat out five times a week and play the rest of the time, watch TV and cut up and raise your family and everybody die and go to heaven. That's great if it can happen and it has happened for some. But that ain't, the, that ain't the way it was in the Bible. They killed Jesus, they killed the apostles, they killed every one of them. They was all sacrificed. There's all uh, the early church, they killed us, and we ain't no better than that. We may see our taste of that before this thing's over. We may have to pay some kind of price before it's all over. I hope the Lord comes today. I hope the Lord comes today. Sooner the better. If he wanted to call us out here this morning, that'd be perfectly fine with me. I ain't got nothing down here that I'm dying to see or do. Brother, you, if you have... You just ain't seen the light yet on this world. This whole world ain't your friend, y'all. This world ain't got your best interest at heart. I mean, I enjoy my life. I got a good family. We got a great church and all that. But we all got burdens and problems. I wouldn't care a bit to just leave it all behind this morning and go on home and be with the Lord. How about you? That's right. So the cross is the answer. The old song said, I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I'll never see the gates of life. If the way of the cross, I miss. Number four, the way of the cross is the only way that men can be saved. Why did I? I know people today that don't believe in hell. If there's no hell, why did he die? He didn't have to. They didn't take his life. He gave it. He, lay, he said, I lay it down. I laid down my life. Why did he do that? Now, if there's no hell, what was the point in that? He's paying a price for something. He's paying a price for something. If, if there's no hell and there's no, by the way, same Bible tells you there's a heaven, tells you there's a hell. All these people that don't believe in hell, they all believe in heaven. Ain't that funny how you pick and choose what part of the Bible you want to believe in and what part you don't. But you can't have it both ways. As much as I hate to say it and as much as I wish there wasn't no such place, there's a hell fire. You'll go there unless you come by the way of the cross. That is completely politically incorrect, what I just said. What I just said 
won't fly, as they say, on TV, on the news, in colleges and universities. They want you to think, well, religion's all right. If that's what makes you happy, that's fine. But nobody should try to force one religion on the other because we don't know what's all right. There are no absolutes. We don't even know if there is a God. Uh, that, that's a miserable way to have to live. Amen. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. The way of the cross is the only way that men can be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, they said many years ago, um, a ship, a ship out in the Atlantic coast a long time ago was sinking and there wasn't enough life jackets to go around. Heard them stories like the Titanic stuff. And they said this man and his wife and his little boy was going down on that, on, with that boat and they found two life jackets. And that man, it wasn't like men nowadays. Men nowadays say, I'm just as good as you are. But back then, men were men. And that man put his, that life jacket on his wife and on that little baby boy and said, tell him. When he gets big enough, tell him that daddy loved him enough to give his life for him. And he went down and drowned. Many, many years later, they're sitting at the table. They had a picture of his daddy on the wall and the little boy was, you know, got up at seven or eight, nine years old, said, Mama, why can't, what happened to my daddy? And she sat down and told him a story. She said, Son, we was all going down. We was all going to die. And your daddy loved you enough. He told me to tell you he loved you enough. You didn't even know it before you didn't even realize it. Like before me and you could ever realize it, he done this for us. Before we was ever born, he said, tell him that I loved him enough to lay down my life for him. Brother, his mama told him that, and they had a great time. That's exactly what the Lord did for us. Willingly laid down his life for us. I, I like that story. He said that old guy come in the barber shop a few years ago. Remember back in the old days, all the men went to the barber shop. That's the place where men gossip. And, uh, and they'd all go in there and they'd all sit around there. I've seen them sit around there and talk. A bunch of them lined up like that waiting on their turn. And said, this old lawyer come in, old hot shot lawyer, thought he knew everything. He'd come in one day, walked in like that. Say, fellas, took his overcoat off and hung it on that thing right there and said, what's the good news? And the bar barber over here was a Christian and he said, Jesus died for sinners. And the Lord, he turned around, everybody went, oh my goodness. He said, uh, uh, what'd you say? He said, I said Jesus died for sinners. And I'm telling you this morning, that's the best news the world's ever heard. Are you a sinner this morning? Jesus died for you. He died for you. That's good news. There's hope for you. Hey man, don't ever think there ain't hope. Don't ever think I'll never make it. Don't ever think I'm not good enough. All of that's true. We can't be good enough. But Jesus died for sinners. Lastly, I'll say this and I'm through this morning. The way of the cross is the only way you can get to heaven. He died that we might live. man told years ago about those prairie fires. Out in, the, out in the, the wild west when those, those um, wagon trains or whatever they called them be a bunch of, bunch of settlers and they would, they would travel in them covered, old covered wagons you've seen them on, on the old westerns and, and sometimes they might have one at I don't know Dollywood or somewhere I don't, or, and you can see them they got them covered on like that and they're made out of wood and the big, them big old wheels that steel wrapped around them well that's the way they traveled and they said sometimes them prairie fires would get started up. And buddy, if you was out there in some of them, some of them places out there in, in, in Texas, some places flatter than a pancake, man. I, when I first flew to Texas, the first time I flew there, I looked at it and there wasn't no trees out in Amarillo. And I, I, I thought, Lord, we took a wrong turn. We're hit, landing on the moon. I mean, that's the way it looks, part of it. And and I remember I remember thinking, good night. And some of it's so flat. You walk out in town and you can smell cows. You say, man, I smell cows. And they say, yeah, they're over yonder, about 30 miles over yonder. And it just blows across. <laughs> True. I mean, and you think, here, I'm glad it ain't like that here, thank God. Uh, but uh, some of us got neighbors. You know. But, uh, you know, they said uh, them fires just, once they got started, just 
Burn up everything fast. There wasn't no hope. So you know what them guys would do? They said they'd go out there and they'd make a big circle around their camp and they'd set it on fire and control it. They'd burn this huge place all the way around their camp for their women and their, their babies. And they'd all get in there and burn it up. And you know what their philosophy was? Their philosophy was the fire cannot come for the fire has already been. Amen. They said, when that fire comes up, it's already burnt. Can't burn it twice. And that fire comes up that and just stop. And they'd lay down and lay down and go to sleep and say we're safe. Because the fire cannot come where the fire's already been. Listen, I was a sinner and I need, my sins was going to take me to hell. And the judgment of God was on me, y'all. The judgment of God was on Brother Danny. And I was going to die and go to hell. But listen, Jesus died and he put that hedge, that fire all around me. Judgment, judgment. My judgment's already happened. Judgment can't come where judgment's already been. When he died on the cross for us, he was being judged for our sin. What he is, he didn't have none. It was our sins put on him. Thank God the fire can't come where the fire's already been. You know how come I can't go to hell? I can't go to hell because it's already been, my price has already been paid and I just accepted that. I just accepted that. I'm glorying in the cross. I glory in the cross. At the cross, at the cross. I'm telling you, the old, the old song says, on a hill far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. For it was on that old cross Jesus suffered suffered and bled and died I, and I cherish the old rugged cross. Hallelujah this morning. Listen brother, hell fire can't hurt me cause heaven fire's done bought me and I'm glad this morning for the cross and when I die or if I die I'm going to come stand before the Lord and I'll say like them old preachers used to say I learned a lot. Listen to them old time preachers. You want an education? Listen to them old time preachers. This new bunch, I, I they're, they're missing a little bit. Them old time preachers had some smarts, buddy. And I'm telling you, you know what they'd say? They said this. When I stand before the Lord, it'll be this. Nothing in my hand I bring. Simply to thy cross I cling. And buddy, I can go home on that. I can go home on that. When it comes our last day, I'll say nothing in my hands I bring. Simply to the cross I cling. And the Lord will say, enter in, preacher. Come on in and enjoy heaven forever and ever and ever. I'm telling you, that's why Paul said, I glory in the cross. But those song says, in the cross, in the cross. Be my glory ever till my raptured soul shall sing. Rest beyond the river. Let's stand with our heads bowed. Maybe you're here this morning. Maybe you're here this morning. And you're saved, but you're not living like you should. And you just want to get down here on your knees this morning and rededicate your life and thank him for dying on the cross. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never been saved. You say, I've heard people say, I'd give anything in the world to believe what you said there, Brother Danny. I'd give anything in the world if I could just lay down at night and know my sins are gone. Well, you can. You get out of your seat, get down here on your knees, somebody take the Bible, you claim it and believe it. And the Bible said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can get saved here this morning. Ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Walk down like a man. Be a man. Walk down that aisle and get down on your knees and say, I believe Jesus died for my sin. Walk down that aisle and say, you know what? Publicly. Everybody in the Bible Jesus called. He called them publicly. Ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Come on out here this morning. Get down on your knees and say, Lord, I think something's already coming. You might be as a Christian. How long has it been since so you just got down and said, Lord, I thank you for dying for me, and that's the least I can do is live for you. That's the least I can do is live for you. Heavenly Father, now do what ought to be done here this morning. Take this message, use it for your glory. Touch somebody's heart. Save somebody's soul. God, I pray for that one here this morning who does not yet know you and the free pardon of sin, that they'll come this morning, that they'll get their heart right, come to you by faith and by grace. Lord, I pray that you'd help that Christian who's maybe messed up, 
walk in a far off or a guilty distance, they'll come to you this morning and make things right. For it's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. On a hill far away, stood an old you come. You need to come this morning. Come on, teenager, young person. You come right now. Come on. Suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the deep and best. Amen. 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 If you need to come. All right, everybody, everybody on the chorus now, let's sing. So I'll chant, sing it. The old rugged cross. Sing now. Till my trophies at last I lay down. Hallelujah. I will cling to the old rugged cross. And exchange it someday for a crown. Sing it, brother. Let's sing another verse, everybody. Oh, the old Amen. rugged cross. Amen. So despised Amen. by the world. Better do business with the Lord today. A wondrous attraction for me. For the dear Lamb of God left his glory above. Bad on dark cow. Amen. Dark yes, glory to God. That'll give you hope. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. Amen. Till my trophies at last I lay down. Sing it, everybody. I will cling to the old rugged cross and exchange it someday for a crown. She's playing softly this morning. Don't ever, ever get over. If you get down and think, poor me, nobody cares. That, that's the devil telling you that. Somebody loved you enough to die for you. And you get to live with him one day forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. You have no reason to pout. No reason to be depressed. No reason to be, feel down and out. I'm going to talk about a little bit about depression tonight. And all these kids saying they're depressed. When they're 15 years old. I didn't know what the word meant until I was 50. I don't know. I still don't know if I know what it means. If it means you want to run into a tree, maybe I have been. But we got a whole generation <laughs> that I don't know what's wrong with them. They all ain't supposed to be on medicine. They need to know somebody loved them Amen. and cared for them and will help them through life. Amen. All right. Got that? <laughs>